Hello family, grace to you. Once again, this is Greg coming to you from faithsmessenger.com. The title of today's message is The Joy of the Lord is Our Strength. The Joy of the Lord is Our Strength. That portion of Nehemiah 8.10 is what I heard quite often when I became a Christian. I wanted to be joyful. I wanted the formula or the recipe, if you would, for joy. And that's what I received. But I didn't really understand how that applied. How, how do I apply that principle, that portion of scripture to my life? And no one gave me any explanation about how to do that. So what I ended up doing was I tried to imagine the joy that Jesus had when he was here, which is pretty difficult to do. How can you imagine someone else's joy? But I, I, that's all I had to go on. So I want to get into that portion of Nehemiah 8.10, and um, I wish that it was broken down to me like this when I first started on my journey. It would have helped me a lot. So let's get into it. Okay. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Okay. Who is the Lord? I think that's a pretty, pretty obvious question to anyone who's been a Christian for any length of time. The Lord it's referring to is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ is our strength. Okay, so who is Jesus Christ? Well, John chapter 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word it's referring to is Jesus Christ, okay? So we could, in essence, say in Nehemiah 8.10, it's saying that the joy of the Word is our strength. Now that makes a lot more sense to me, or it would have made a lot more sense to me back in the day when I was searching for joy. Okay, the joy of the Word is our strength. So, how do I apply that to my life if I don't know the Word? Well, the answer is I can't. I would have to know the Word that pertains to my particular situation where I'm struggling with joy in order to, to accept that principle, in order to put that principle into operation in my life. It would be the same as your relative is on their deathbed with cancer and no one's expecting them to pull through. And the physician comes in and he says, never fear, I am the leading cancer doctor in the country, in the world, and I have looked at your loved one's charts and I know what to do, everything's going to be okay. Now at that moment, you can say that the joy of the physician is your strength because the burden that was on your shoulders facing the death of your loved one, that physician took away from you. You are now free. You have the joy of the word from the physician. Suppose you were in dire straits financially. You were on the verge of bankruptcy and you're pulling your hair out and you don't know what to do. And here you get a call from the richest man in the world and he has agreed to satisfy all your financial debt. Okay, in that instance, we could say that the joy of the financier is your strength because now you can walk away lighthearted. You can walk away no fear, no worry, just completely free because of the word of the financier. I think you can get what I'm, what I'm saying here. It's the joy of the word that is our strength. Okay. So what does the word have to say regarding my health? The Bible says, 1 Peter 2.24, that by his stripes I am healed. So the joy of that word becomes my strength. The joy of that word has uh, relieved me of my burdens and I am now strengthened by that word. What does the word have to say about my finances? The Bible says that my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So when I'm facing that burden and I'm feeling weak, the joy of the word is my strength, which is my assurance that my needs will be met. 
So I want to leave you with that and I hope that that inspired you to get into the word, find out what the final authority is. When that final word is issued, that word can now become your strength in all situations of life. So I want to thank you for joining me today and I want to invite you that if you have not subscribed to our channel yet to do so by clicking on the red subscribe button on your screen. By doing so, you will receive notifications when new videos such as this one are posted. Now I want to speak to those who may be fellow Christian YouTubers. We have a community set up called micro-ministries.com. Now that community has been geared toward driving quality Christian traffic to your YouTube channel. God has given you a word and that word needs to be seen and heard by the masses. So what we do is we offer encouragement, support, we do training on SEO, we do everything we can to try to drive traffic to your YouTube channel. So once again, join us at micro-ministries.com. Now that is a private community, so you'll need an invitation. What you'll need to do is send me an email message at faithsmessenger at gmail.com, and I'll get that invitation right over to you. And last but not least, I would like to invite you to join us on our blog at faithsmessenger.com. We currently have over 550 individual blog posts on the blog, which address a myriad of different topics real life, everyday topics that all of us have to face and go through. So now with all that being said, so now that we know how to be joyous in the Lord, joyous from the Word, joyous from what He's already said about us and our situations in life, I want to ask you something. I would like for you to ask yourself, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're facing, is anything impossible with God? Have a great day, family. I love you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.